Oh, when they die. Okay, not ha what happens. Uh, no, not okay, then, got it. Okay. Mm -hmm, they're still death. So, where do they go during that time? That's a good question right there. Okay, so since you put it that way, what I would say is this is that that's a very good question, number one. Number two, we can find the clue at Revelation 20. That's the only solution. And then, not only that, but also looking at other different things in the Bible that we believe in. So, in Revelation chapter 20, so, assuming that you die in the millennium, which does happen, so that was the verse I was trying to find. That's found at the book of Isaiah. I think it's chapter 8. But the verse says that if you're a sinner during God's millennial kingdom, you're going to die at the age of 100. So, that's what happens. So, then, where do the dead go during that time of the millennium? That's a very good question. Well, what I can figure out is this. If you look at Revelation chapter 20, notice that at verse 4, I saw thrones, they sat upon them. Judgment was given unto them. I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God. Let's skip down. And they lived and reigned with Christ. How long? A thousand years. Notice, this is important. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. Okay. So in Revelation chapter 20, verse 4 through 5, we see here that there are tribulation saints living and ruling. But according to the book of Isaiah, so Isaiah chapter 65, verse 20, what you're going to notice right here is that a sinner can die. You can die in the millennium. But it is a sinner. So here's the idea right here. Let's, I think we have to combine this. Yes, because Isaiah 65 shows something. So keep your hand at Revelation 20. Keep your hand at Revelation 20, and then we'll go to Isaiah 65. Isaiah 65. Okay, my opinion is this. My opinion is that when tribulation saints, it says live, right? Is that what the verse said of Revelation 20, verse 4 and 5? Yes. So they don't die. The only people who die in the millennium, what you're going to find out, is the one who sin against God. Notice Isaiah 65, verse 20. There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not filled his days, for the child shall die an hundred years old, but the sinner being an hundred years old shall be accursed. So notice right here that when it comes to like children dying a hundred years old, or an old man that hath not filled his days, the context, it says the sinner being a hundred years old shall be what? Accursed. So accursed means actually damned in the Bible. How do we know that? Because of Romans chapter 10. So yeah, you know what? This will be my last question question to answer. Jump to Romans 10. Now keep your hand on Isaiah though. Keep your hand on Isaiah. Look at Romans 10. Accursed is damned. Accursed is damned. We're going to look at Romans chapter 9. Excuse me. Romans chapter 9 verse 3. So notice right here, die in the millennium and that sinners were accursed at a hundred years. Accursed is damned, according to Romans chapter 9, and then notice at verse 3. I wish, for I wish that I myself were a what? Accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. So notice that Paul had a burden for his fellow people, the Jews, who are law sinners. Paul said, I wish I'm accursed from Christ. See that? When you're separated from the body of Christ and you're accursed, what is that? That's lost. That's being damned right there. So Romans chapter 9, verse 3, that's being damned. Evidence of this is found all over at the book of Isaiah as well as Matthew 5. Matthew 5 through 7 especially shows you if you don't follow the rules, if you break the rules of the millennial kingdom, then what happens? When you break the rules of the 1,000-year kingdom, then you burn in hell. 
you see that all over at Matthew chapter 5, verse 7. Five, chapter 5 through 7. Thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out. Thy right hand offend thee, cut it off. Uh, you have, righteousness must exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees, and etc., etc., etc. So you've got to be doing those things. Now, anyways, aside from that fact, when we come over here concerning about sinners accursed, then what, where do they go when they die? They go to hell because of Revelation 20. So keep your, uh, keep your hand on Isaiah and Revelation. You can skip Romans 9 now. We get Revelation chapter 20. Notice right here, verse 5, but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. So contrast, this is the what? First resurrection. So it's contrasting the first resurrection of saved people who are alive. From the second resurrection, if they're not saved people, who are they? They're lost people. So where are they? They're in hell. Well, what makes you say that, Pastor? Because look at verse 13. Okay, verse 12, this is the dead being judged at the great white throne judgment, right? Look at verse 13. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and what? Hell delivered up the dead which were in them. Do they go to hell at the millennium? Yeah, look at Isaiah chapter 66, verse 24. Isaiah 66, verse 24. So that's where they go when they die. Isaiah chapter 66. Oops. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 24. Notice right here that the word of God shows that when you die in the millennium, part of the sinners being accursed at 100 years, you're damned at the end. All right, Isaiah 66, 24. They shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. For their what? Worms shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched. And notice that the context is what? The context is, notice that at verse 20. Notice verse 21. Verse 23. See, they're all worshiping God on the earth. See, that's undoubtedly the millennium right there. But then they get to see people burning at hell at verse 24. And by the way, this passage Worms shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, exactly matches with Mark chapter 9. Yep. And Mark chapter 9, when it says hell, the Greek word is Gehenna. So when we talk about Gehenna, it is a literal hellfire on the earth in the millennium, more specifically. Yep. Now, the thing is this, though, is that it may be possible, according to Isaiah chapter 65, verse 20, it says an old man filled his days, or a child dies a hundred years. It's possible, then, that there could be good people or innocent people who die in the millennium. Now, I believe, personally, that they're going to live. I think context would, context would match more accurately to sinners who uh, disobey God. But because this preacher is responsible for teaching all the truth, I'm going to always open up to possibilities here. So here's the thing. It is very possible it could be an innocent person who dies in the millennium. What happens to them? The only, this is very interesting. The only thing that I can figure out that would make sense to them is that there has always been a compartment open during an intermediate place when you can't go to heaven or to hell, but you're innocent. And this is paradise. But the paradise I'm talking about is not up at the third heaven. It's Abraham's bosom. Yes, now, if you look up the word paradise in a dictionary, it's not only referring to... If you look up the definition, it doesn't only mean a blessful celestial abode up in heaven. Paradise, if you look at the definition, it also defines you an intermediate place for the dead. How about that? And that's what dispensationalists teach, is that this paradise is the realm of the dead. So it's also called Hades in Greek, we also refer to that, or Sheol, Hades or Sheol. So in this section right here, we have innocent souls who are in an intermediate place where they can't go to heaven or to hell. So then this is referring to the innocent people right here. And during that time, they're going to wait it out. That's possible. You might say, why is that, Pastor? Because in the tribulation, he does that again. Yeah. That's... Uh, I, my suggestion is to watch my video. The video is called Paradise... Uh, Paradise in Hell. That's the title of the teaching. It's called Paradise in Hell. If you look up that video, Paradise in Hell, it'll give you explanation why paradise is going to reopen as an intermediate place. But not only that, Revelation chapter 20, 
The verse, what did it say? It says not just hell giving up the dead. It's what? Death and hell giving up the dead which were in them. So it's, that means then when you die, you're not just in hell. You're at the realm of the dead. What is the realm of the dead? Throughout the Old Testament, there is undoubtedly some sort of realm of the dead. But we never knew what it was. But Jesus Christ made it clear what that realm of the dead was at Luke chapter 16. It was paradise, Abraham's bosom, uh, below the earth. Right. And the, the apostle Paul made it clear that Jesus Christ, during the church age, the New Testament today, he took it up. And then I gave you interesting studies where based off of Revelation 6 and other passages, where this opens up again at the tribulation. That's right. So it makes sense to open up again, why not at the millennium as well? Because... It means what it says. What does paradise mean in the dictionary? Intermediate place for the dead. So it makes sense.